Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over angular displacement, velocity, and acceleration. So let's get going. So we're on to the second topic of rotational motion now called angular motion, and we're going to begin by looking at angular displacement, velocity, and acceleration. So it says here that angular motion has parallels with linear motion which is already familiar to you. So a lot of the angular motion that we're about to look at is actually very similar or what we call analogous to linear motion. So the first one we'll look at is angular displacement and it says here that objects in angular motion travel through angles and these are measured in radians. Angular displacement theta is therefore measured in radians. So we've got this new quantity, angular displacement, and it's given the symbol theta, and it's measured in units of radians. We say that an object moving through one full revolution of 360 degrees is equivalent to moving two pi radians. So it's very useful to remember that 360 degrees is equal to two pi radians, or you could remember that 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. Or to convert between degrees and radians, you could use the following. So you could use the fact that one radian is equal to 57 point three degrees and this is just found using this equivalence here. The last thing to note here is that it says any calculations carried out on circular motion should be in radians. So if you're doing calculations on circular motion make sure that your calculator is set to radians mode rather than degrees mode to ensure that you get the answers right. Next we have angular velocity and it says here that the angular velocity of a rotating object omega is defined as the rate of change of angular displacement. So just like velocity being the rate of change of displacement we can say that angular velocity is the rate of change of angular displacement. And we have a relationship for this, which will be on your relationship sheet in the exam. So it says the omega, the angular velocity, is equal to d theta by dt, or the first derivative or differential of the angular displacement theta. So we have the omega is the angular velocity measured in radians per second, theta is the angular displacement measured in radians, and t is time measured in seconds. Now notice for radians, I've just put rad for short. Lastly, we have angular acceleration. And the angular acceleration of a rotating object, alpha, is defined as the rate of change of angular velocity. Just like linear acceleration is defined as the rate of change of linear velocity. Just like for linear acceleration, we saw that a equals dv by dt, which equals d squared s by dt squared. We have a very similar relationship for angular acceleration. So it says that angular acceleration alpha is equal to d omega by dt, the first derivative or differential of omega, the angular velocity, which is equal to d squared theta by dt squared, so the second differential of the angular displacement. And here are what each of the quantities mean and their units. So we've got alpha is angular acceleration measured in radians per second squared. Again, we can say rad for short, so rad s to the minus two. Omega is angular velocity measured in radians per second again. Theta is angular displacement measured in radians, and t is time measured in seconds. Note that when we're doing questions on angular acceleration, we assume that angular acceleration is constant because anything more difficult than that is beyond the scope of the advanced higher physics course. That's all from me folks, I hope you found the video useful. If you did, give it a like, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.